Hello, uh, we're here with Stephen Fortney, who is running for Seattle City Attorney. Would you like to go ahead with your two minute introduction? Yes, hi all, thanks for having me tonight. Um, my name is Steve Fortney, I'm running for City Attorney. Um, I guess I would describe myself a bit as a reluctant candidate. I'm not somebody who seeks the spotlight typically, but I think there are times when those of us who can serve and believe we can find answers to the city problems um, and city issues that we're all facing need to step up. Um, I live here in Seattle in the Queen Anne area. I have uh, two young children who uh, my wife and I are, are trying to raise to our best of our ability. We take them all throughout the city. Um, I'm a lifelong Seattleite with the exception of when I was away for some educational purposes and some work experiences. Um, I, I really do love this city. This is, uh, this is my home. Um, it means, I, I think my affiliation with Seattle is deeper than almost any affiliation that I have other than with my family and maybe my country. Um, you know, I, I think right now I'm running because I, I view, I, I see a void of leadership at city hall um, and at the city attorney level. And I think um, what I mean by that is I, we, don't, we don't have people who are willing to to put their ego aside, to put their ideology aside and really focus on solving problems. We have a lot of talk about compassion and how we're gonna, and, and, and our hopes and dreams, but no action uh, or at least not measurable action with respect to our homelessness um, crisis as I, as I think it is. Um, we, we have seemingly little action with rebuilding or building trust between, sorry, oh, between our neighborhoods and our police department. And, and, and no one seems to be talking about an increase in violent crime in our black communities. And I, I believe in, in my heart that um, black lives matter at all times, not just when it's a, a police black incident, but also when it's a, a, a person um, who is in a black community who was shot by somebody other than the police. So I wanna address these issues um, and, and actually solve them. I believe I'm a problem solver. I, I, I look at my life's history to demonstrate that. And um, here I am and I'm ready to serve. Great, thank you. Uh, so now we'll move into the uh, prepared questions and I'll place the first one into the chat. And let me see here. Uh, I believe I had Sherry for the first one. Hi, um, do you support and will you advocate for ending qualified immunity for law enforcement? So I think that's a, that's a great question, Sherry. Um, Qualified immunity comes from uh, uh, the police contract and, and codified in our municipal code and our state code. And I think um, qualified immunity is, is something where we, we definitely need to take steps to remove. And so I will advocate for um, changes in how we address qualified immunity, meaning that government officials, including police officers, who skirt the edge of the constitutional bounds of their duties um, no longer can get away with such action. So the answer to your question is yes. Um, I support the end of qualified immunity for police officers as well as other government officials. Great, thank you. Uh, question two, and uh, Laura, are you available? Yes. Do you support the city's sweeping of homeless encampments? If not, what concrete steps would you take to stop the sweeps? Yeah, I think that's a great question, and it's a. I think it's a larger question. It it, it goes to what? Well, what are we when we say sweeps? It, I understand that to mean um, taking um, a, a, an encampment or people that are sleeping on the sidewalk or in our parks and, and simply moving them to another location. Um, I think that. Uh, uh, any sort of movement of individuals who are down on their luck or vulnerable population, as I'll call them, um, I think all of any, any sort of movement should be accompanied with um, opportunities to, to seek and, and accept accountable social services, social services for, for drug addiction disorder, social services for mental illness, often which go together. And then hopefully, as we can continue to build out tiny homes and find places within our county and within our city and within our state, um, roofs over their heads, because I do believe in somewhat of a housing first mentality could work, such as what you see in um, um, places like Copenhagen, where um, uh, there's a constitutional right to say um, to a roof over your head. Um, 
I think to answer your question um, more in, in depth, I think the city attorney can play a great role. And I pledge to you all um, that I will work my, my, my tail off to do this, but can play a great role in um, connecting individuals who come across the city attorney's desk with accountable social services. And, and, and I pledge to learn about every one of our social service providers. We're spending $161 million, and I think our next budget on direct cents. spend from the city. And I wanna ensure that when a person needs services, they come across the city attorney's desk, they're connected with services who provide follow through. And the city attorney is uniquely situated to provide that follow through. And I pledge to you to learn the social services, provide the follow through by building relationships with probation officers, the social services community and the municipal judges and the King County prosecutor's office to ensure that people aren't simply being ca caught and then released and then and, and, and going to services, but then going back out onto the streets without having a positive change in behavior. Great, thank you. Uh, question number three, I just placed that into the chat and Alice, would you take that one? Yeah, absolutely. Should the city change its approach to prosecuting misdemeanor offenses? Will you file charges for drug possessions? Um, so that's a, Again, an interesting question that I think is a, is a little larger than, than um, the, the specific question that was asked, but I will try to answer your specific question as well. Um, my approach to, to prosecution at large is, a, is an individualized approach. I think a prosecutor, any prosecutor worth his or her salt, should set forth clear guidelines for prosecution based on the type of crime and the, or the type of offense and the, the individual's past history with respect to that offense. Therefore, you would treat somebody very differently who stole a bag of chips or stole a shirt to um, uh, um, pay for a drug addiction. That person needs help and the city attorney can ensure accountable help there. But I would treat that person very differently than somebody who say has committed, uh, has a long history of felonies who comes before the city attorney's office. There that person may need help. I'm all about reformative, um, 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 justice within the criminal justice system, but that person may be from public safety standpoint, um, shouldn't be going back out on the street. Now to answer your specific question about prosecution of drug possession, um, you know, we, we, the question is, well, is this an individual who has a drug addiction problem and that's why they have the drugs? So like maybe they have a small amount of drugs and a small amount of money on them and they have a nonviolent history that person should not be prosecuted. That person needs to be connected with social services. That's very different than a person who has a large amount of drugs on them and has weapons on them and has a long history of violent crime. That person, um, you, you, you would hopefully, in my opinion, um, take off the streets for a certain amount of time to provide them um, reformative justice while in custody because of the public safety prong that we also have to consider. I think any prosecutor would consider that. So that's that's my approach to crime and, it, and it's my approach to low level um, drug offenses of nonviolent offenders um, and versus uh, folks with long felony histories who are likely doing the most damage in our society. Great, thank you. And question four, Jeff. Do you support ranked choice voting for Seattle's elections? And what would you do to make ranked choice voting a reality in Seattle? Yeah, I love it. Well, I used to talk about this issue with friends when I was like 22 in DC. Um, so uh, so I, I believe in ranked choice voting, okay? That's a personal opinion. Um, the, the, you know, I believe in humble civil service, okay? And I, I think that in some respects, the city attorney uh, should stay in his or her lane. And I hate to say that because it's, it's great if we all speak out about every issue. But with that said, I try to um, be, a, be a little bit um, restrained in what I have to say. Uh, so if, if I was asked the question, my answer is I support it. Okay. What can the city attorney do? Well, the city attorney can ensure that if the council and the mayor choose to pass such legislation and change our election process, which they can do, that um, I would advise and counsel that policy change such that it is best able to withstand a legal challenge. And then I would defend that legislation 
in court because it would likely um, take on at least a separation of powers challenge um, or, or um, sort of a, a, a constitutional challenge from, um, um, from various folks who may not have the same, same interest. So um, I, I, I think that answers the question the best I can. I, I'd, I'd love to say more, but uh, I don't think it's my purview for the given position I'm running, which is a, a lawyer for the city and for the mayor. Great, thank you. So now uh, next we'll move into the questions from our board and they'll raise their hand. The responses to these are one minute apiece and I see a hand from Jeff. So um, thanks for coming. Uh, you mentioned a, a leadership void at the city attorney's office and you want more follow through, follow through on social services. Um, and I'm wondering if you could be more specific. I mean, we've got drug courts, we've got a veteran court, we've got a lead law enforcement assisted diversion. So there's a lot of, maybe not enough, but a lot of diverting um, potential, you know, alleged um, criminals to social services instead of prosecution. I'm wondering, is the, is the model wrong or is the model right, but we should do it more? Like where, where what would you actually change? Sure, that's a, that's a great question. I, I love that you got into the details with, um, with, with LEAD, for example, and I, and I fully support LEAD. Um, Lisa Dugard, I think has done a wonderful job there. And, and I think we need to continue to scale lead. I, I, I probably agree with respect to scaling lead with my with Peter Holmes and people at city council. And I don't agree with everything that they're doing, I, I promise you, but I may agree there. Um, but here's where I, I, I disagree. It's, it's you know, lead, we, we, lead doesn't have scale as of now. So we have a lot more social services than simply lead that are out there. The question is, if a person is diverted, and then the next day, it's, a, it's an out of custody diversion. So what, whether or not that person shows up at their, at their, um, um, uh, it, it, their what I'll call reformative uh, treatment facility is within the purview of the city attorney to, 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 to know and to provide follow through. So I would talk to the probation officers and I would say, hey, did that person actually make, make it there? I would talk to the social service provider who I'm hoping to get to know and I'm actually trying to do that during this campaign is learn about as many of them as I can and say, did this, did this individual actually make it there and how is it going? Because that's what you do if you care about the city. So I, it's really about follow through, it's about hard work and me on the ground doing it every day. And I, that's what I do in every job I've ever had. I, I think I'm out of time. Thank you. Uh, Carrie. Hey there, thanks for joining us tonight. Um, I heard you say at the beginning of your um, interview that you thought there was a lack of leadership. And so I was one in city council and around Seattle. So I was wondering if you could speak to a specific goal that you've accomplished that shows your ability to um, offer leadership or community collaboration and what was the result of those efforts? Sure. Um, well, you know, I think, Every day I demonstrate, and I, I, it, it's sort of an oxymoron here, but I, I, every day in every job that I've had, I demonstrate what I consider to be humble leadership. And I try to do it with my actions and how I treat people on an individual level. And that's really what I'm talking about when I talk about building relationships, building relationships with, the, with um, um, our, our municipal court, with our probation officers, et cetera. So I handle a lot of, um, contractual issues. This is kind of boring, but I handle a lot of contractual issues at Microsoft. And to do that, I have to bring in our environmental team, our security teams, um, uh, privacy teams, and the business teams. And they all have diverging interests. And what I do is bring these folks together as the lawyer to try to get a deal done with an adverse party. So I, I, oftentimes I'm, I'm um, having to work relationships with people from different interests I bring them together, and this is, an, this, this is a day-to-day -day accomplishment that I have, and it demonstrates how I will approach this job, which is a job of every day getting up and, and doing that sort of hard work of government service. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Further questions? Uh, Jeff, go ahead. Oops, I'm going to let Barbara So, um, the city attorney's job day to day, probably most of the hours, is actually more on the civil side than the criminal side. Do you think there's been any 
do you see daylight between what your approach would be and what Pete Holmes' approach has been to you know, advising the council to um, you know, defending the city against lawsuits, things like that? Sure. I, I mean, I, I think I'll take the, take the question and, and run with it if you don't mind. I, you know, I'd look at the police consent decree. That's the civil side. Yes, it you know has a criminal prong to it, but it's it's the civil side. I was in the I clerked for James Robart. I was in the courtroom when that was signed, and and the judge declared that Black Lives Matter. Um, that was novel in 2012. Now, where are we as of today? Well, this, the city attorney represents the city of Seattle, the Community Police Commission, um, the the um, and, and uh, in this litigation. Okay, so. The question has, that, that needs to come up is where are we in terms of um, enacting the vision of that consent decree, which in my opinion is a community-based police department with accountability in disciplinary processes and clear guidelines on reasonable force and anti-bias training. So Pete Holmes hasn't been able to enact that vision. He hasn't brought the police department together. He hasn't brought the community um, um, community groups together to, to push the reforms that are needed at the police department. Again, like I will take a very hands-on collaborative approach to get this done and, and, and actually reform our police department in a more community-based manner using the consent decree as a starting point and then every day trying to instill a different culture at the police department. You have to have a relationship there though to do that. Thank you. Any further questions? I have one. Um, so speaking of uh, law enforcement, um, how, how would you approach your relations with them? Well, I come at people with, um, I try to treat people with integrity and dignity at all times. I think we need to reform our police department. I, I have ideas how to do that. I, I think that we need a civilian side within our police department. These are broad brush concepts that I'm willing to, to discuss, but a, a civilian side with backup um, um, police officers in the traditional sense. But I also want our police officers out in our community, helmets off, getting to know our citizens, the businesses and communities, the people in the communities, the youth groups in the communities, okay? So when, uh, I, what I will do is, you know, right now we're under consent decree, so I can go to the police department and work with them. I can work with the chief and say, look, this is a cultural change that needs to take place on the ground. And here are steps that I will take. I will also ensure that the city attorney is paired with via liaisons into all of our different communities to, to, to discuss with our community groups and police department and civilian officers trends in crime and how to beat crime before it happens. That's my goal. Okay, thank you. And final question, John. Oops, I uh, recognize that this is a non-political job, but it is an elective job. So I'm curious uh, about your endorsements and your campaign financing plans. Uh, where you're getting money, how much you're gonna raise. Do you take money from people doing business with the city? Well, um, I, I, my campaign is somewhat new, so I'm working hard to gain endorsements. I'm going to community leaders throughout the city um, and, and talking to them about my passions for the city and, and, and what my hopes and visions are that we've been talking about, and I'm trying to get their endorsements. So I'm gonna do this on a very granular grassroots level. Same way with raising money. I mean, I, I, my, I'm part of the Democracy Voucher Program, and so I'm going out to people throughout the community and in and, and various communities and asking for $10 donations. So I'm a grassroots guy at my very core. I've spent a lot of time in my life um, on the ground, registering voters, uh, um, knocking on doors, getting out the vote, and that's how I'm approaching this campaign. No, I'm not going to take she money from people who do business with the city. That That is not something that I, 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 I'm sort of a pros, old school prosecutor from a um, hey, you should be completely independent of everything kind of guy. Uh, I just want to do the job. Thank you. Great, thank you. And with that, uh, we'll go ahead and ask you for a one minute wrap up. Yeah, you know, I would tell you all that I love this town. And every place I go in this city, I care about. And my role as city attorney 
what, one, one thing I think we can do to make this a better city is to connect our government, especially with any sort of enforcement prong to it with our communities. So I'm gonna be out in our communities when, I, if, when I'm city attorney at all times. We're gonna have boots on the ground. I'm gonna have liaisons in the different communities knowing our city. And I think when we do that, the connectivity between our communities and our yeah. government with respect to law enforcement will improve and will help seconds. build this trust again between our communities and law enforcement, which is absolutely critical for a public safety prong. And we need public safety to bring back the vibrancy, the cultural and economic vibrancy of this town, which really, really matters to me. Thank you. Great, thank you so much.